The setting is Broadway in New York. The author is one of America's greatest storytellers, Damon Runyon. His Broadway stories of gangsters, bookies, and gamblers are famous. This is Famous Stories. I am John Henderson. Coming up, we will hear the story of Little Miss Marker from the golden age of radio. But first, let us take a look at another version of the story. In 1934, they made a film titled, officially, Damon Runyon's Little Miss Marker. The cast included Adolphe Menju, Dorothy Dell, and six-year-old Shirley Temple in her first real movie. Listen, Sarfo, I want to go for a fin on Dream Prince. You take the I.O.U. till after the race. Eddie, I dropped into the poorhouse last visiting day, and conditions were terrible. The place was so overcrowded, they were sleeping on the floor. Who was? Bookmakers. It used to take markers. Now scram. I want to bet $20 on Dream Prince to win. Not with an I.O.U. I wouldn't take a marker from my best friend. I had a best friend. But I might not be back in time for the race. That's your tough luck. No markers. Hello. Look, this is my little girl. I'll leave her here while I go for the money. I ain't taking no dolls for security. Look, Daddy, she's running away. Is you afraid? You're afraid of my daddy. <laughs> or you're afraid of me. Take his marker. Marker? Yeah. Little doll like that's worth 20 bucks. Any way you look at it. Yeah, she ought to melt down for that much. You go to bed. I don't want to go to bed. What do you do about putting the baby to sleep? How are they coming, kid? Of course, she picked that up. Listen to you, Muggs. Now, you go to bed. Next to that. The kid's getting tough. You'd better tell her a fairy story. My mother used to read to me about King Arthur every night before I went to sleep. Oh, Mark, you be reasonable. I won't. <laughs> all right, all right. What's that, uh, what's that guy's name? King Arthur. King Arthur, all right. When they, uh, when they bang away from the tape tomorrow at Pimlico, you can wager the family knives and forks that, uh, that, mil- that King Arthur will be showing his heels to the best of them. Tomorrow morning, when K- King Arthur steps out, it is conceded by the wise railbirds that he will hang up a new record. Although the track is liable to be muddy, the, uh, King Arthur will go splashing through the wind. Here now is the radio adaptation of that same story from the syndicated series called The Damon Runyon Theater, which first aired October 10th, 1948. The Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master of storytellers, Damon Runyon. And this, one of his most famous, Little Miss Marker. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. This is Broadway speaking. Maybe you know a guy we call Sorrowful Jones. He makes a living by making book. (laughs) That is to say, he is slightly illegal because he takes bets on the horses if one is not able to get to the track due to circumstances. Most of the guys and dolls along Broadway tell you that Sorrowful is a rich man. That is true. It is true because Sorrowful not only remembers the first nickel he makes as a boy, but the same nickel is still in his possession. All at once, Sorrowful is a changed man. And how it happens that Sorrowful is changed is quite a story, which I will tell you in a minute. Back to the Damon Runyon Theater and Little Miss Marker. As I am saying, Sorrowful Jones is a character who is not liked. He gets his name from the fact that anything like a smile is a stranger to his long face. Well, as it happens, I am sitting in Mindy's one night along with a citizen named Regret who is a horse player. We are discussing Sorrowful Jones when Regret looks up and says... And if you are speaking of the devil... You may look toward the door and see same. Sorrowful Jones coming into Mindy's? There must be a catastrophe outside which drives him in. Look, he's got a doll with him. A doll? But a midget one. Oh, it is no midget. This is a small doll, a child. He's coming over. And the chances are better than a million to one that he will have a sad story. About the little doll? About anything. Hello, Broadway. 
Hello, Sarah Holmes. Hello, Regret. Hiya, Sarah Holmes. Is this seat taken? Uh, no, Sarah. I'll take it. Are you driven from your home, Sarah Holmes? No. Uh, maybe you are out this late collecting bets? No. You are hungry? No. Uh, Sarah who is that with you? This is a child, a small one. Yours? I do not own her. She is very cute, Sarah I haven't looked much at her. What are you doing with her? I figure maybe she's hungry. She's been in my place all day since early this morning. Hey, what does a small doll eat? Uh, my experience has been with the larger variety. But if this one runs through the form, she will eat quite a lot. That'll be expensive. I'm always the fall guy. Why do I have all the bad luck? <laughs> please, please, don't laugh, Regret. I have a very bad day today. Look, uh, Sorrowful, maybe if you tell us where this here doll comes from and what you are doing with her... It's a story, a sad one. Uh huh. This morning, a character comes into my place of business, wants to play a deuce on a horse. He doesn't have a deuce, but wants to give me a marker, so I'll put a bet on the horse for him. You? You? You trusted somebody? Uh, this character tells me he'll leave his kid. This one. As security for his bet. He says he'll come back with a two-spot later. And so? His horse loses. I am out two dollars. Who is this character? I don't know. I never see him before in my life. But I figure no guy will leave his kid and not come back. I figure wrong. Oh. Does any of you wish a small doll? I cannot use one. It looks like you are stuck, Sarah. Yeah. She's probably very hungry and will cost me a fortune. Oh, I do not see how such a small doll could eat that much. How do I know? Talk to her. Why? Uh, wait a minute. Uh, hello, doll. Uh, let me try. <clears throat> Good evening, doll. Like I say, I'm out two dollars. Maybe I should leave the doll here on the chair, huh? Maybe somebody will call for her. Please, I, I want to go home. I'm sleepy. Awful sleepy. Maybe because it is after 2 a.m. Hey, she is going to sleep on your shoulder, Sarah. I cannot believe it. A doll putting her head on his shoulder? Hey, she's kind of cute with them blonde curls. Hey, look, doll, doll, you, you, you can't go to sleep on my shoulder. I never see a doll as cute as her. Look at that. She's snuggling up to you, Sarah. Yeah, it's the way these dolls always start. Soft soap first and then the bite. Oh, no, you are wrong, Sarah. This doll is too young to be that smart. Now, I can tell how old the horse is by looking at his teeth. Maybe if I looked at this doll's teeth... Regret, I could keep your the... hands off her. Huh? Sorrowful, for all I want She's not a do. horse. I, uh... Anyway, she's... She's sleepy. If she sleeps, she don't eat and it don't cost me a fortune. You know, Sarah... For... I think she likes you. <laughs> What's wrong? Somebody should like me. It is somewhat unusual. Yeah? This kid's the first character that doesn't try to nudge me out of a fin or a ten spot. All she wants to do is sleep. Maybe I like her too. Anything wrong with that? Nobody said there is, Sorrowful. Look, uh, uh, what are you going to do, Sorrowful? I don't know, Broadway. It's a sense she can't sleep here. It is also a sense that you can't take her back to that joint you live in. It, it, it's only one little room. And there is quite a bit of noise from the, 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 the clubs along the street. Yeah, maybe you're right. Okay, I'll find a place. But how do I get off this chair without waking up the doll? Get up easy, slow, like you're reaching for a check, which you never do. Wise guy. Grab hold of it tight, Sorrowful. Yeah, gee, she doesn't weigh as much as a herring. <laughs> Shut up. First guy wakes her up is the guy I slug. And as for reaching for the checks, you guys can be wrong. Give them to me. It's horrible. I gotta go get a taxi. Good night. A taxi, he says. A taxi? I cannot pinch myself to see if I am dreaming because I cannot move. Well, that is that. Sorrowful walks out of Mindy's carrying the small doll and we do not see him for three days. Until we get a message from him that says to come to a 59th Street address. We are all wondering about this because the address is a classy one overlooking Central Park. And there's no place that Sorrowful would hang around there. But we all show up in the apartment. Regret, Big Sam, Little Mitzi, Harry the Horse, and several other citizens. It is maybe 8 o'clock at night and Sorrowful has not come in yet. We are wondering about this when a door opens and there stands Sorrowful. But what a Sorrowful. 
He is wearing a new suit. Now, now that is something in itself, because nobody has ever seen Sorrowful in anything but the blue sage he picks up at a rummage sale years before. What's more, he is smiling, and it makes his long face look a little like a horse. But it is a smile. He walks over to us and begins the conversation as follows. Good evening, boys. Hi. Well, how do you like the place? Oh, it's a very classy place, Sorrowful. You are, uh... Keeping it for a friend, perhaps? This is my place, Broadway, and it costs plenty of fish a month. I have a long-term lease. From here, you can see the park. And you can hear the handsome cabs. You know there are real horses in that park? No jockeys, though. But now I want to show you guys something. Okay, doll, come in. Look, it's the cabs. Boys, meet the doll. <laughs> Hey, she is the small doll you bring into Mindy's the other night. That is correct, Broadway. You mean you still got her? That is also correct, Regret. But Sorrowful, she don't belong to you. Who says she don't? Well, who says so? Well, look, uh, Sorrowful, maybe the, the, the character who left the witcher will show up. That character was on a bet, and he leaves the doll as a marker. I keep the doll. But uh, what if he comes back? Shut up, Regret. Now... Marky dance for you, Sorrowful. Not right away, honey. We'll keep that for a surprise, huh? You sit on my lap. Come on, doll. All right, Sorrowful. Up you come, baby. <laughs> Look at this doll, you guys. I never see a doll like this before. And she don't ask for nothing. Not a thing. Never puts the bite on me. I never know there's a doll like this any place. Well, she is a cute doll, Sorrowful, but... Uh... Why are we here? Because I know nothing about a doll this size, and I figure I'm going to need help. But from from us? From you, Harry. But, but... No buts. The day you lose 50 bucks on a parlor, you got the 50? Well, sorrowful, you I... You have not I, got I... it, all right. We'll forget the 50. You are going to forget a 50? That's correct. Regret the same as I will forget the C-note for which you are on my books. Well, 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 the same I... goes for all of you. Broadway. Uh, yeah, sorry. You knows around town, pretty much. You ought to pick out a nurse, a housekeeper, a good one. Where am I to find such a character? You'll look. Harry, you will put your attention right here. You will go out and buy clothes, lots of them. With my money? I will open charge accounts at the stores. Now, if anybody does not want to help, then I will see to it that outstanding debts owed to me by some citizens are collected the hard way. We will help you, Sorrowful. After all, she is a cute little doll. Yeah, she is. Marky. Yes, Sorrowful? Tell them the story you told me this morning, huh? Which one, Sorrowful? Any of them, honey. Go ahead. Will they listen to me? They'll listen to you, Marky. Go ahead. All right, Sorrowful. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. How do you like that, huh? Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, great. This kid knows more about literature than all of us put together. Marky, dance for you now, Sorrowful. Oh, you sure will, honey. Uh, sorrowful, I got an engagement. That's right, Harry, I... right here. Go ahead and dance, Marky. Regret, switch on that radio. Okay, Sorrowful. You watch Marky now, Sorrowful. You bet, honey. Go ahead. Personally, I prefer to show at the hot box. The uh, dolls are a little larger. Shut up and watch. Well, we watch Marky dance. We listen to her tell stories until 3 a.m. Sorrowful never gets tired, and he never stops smiling. It is easy to see he is taken, but good. And it goes on like that for days. And it is wonderful what the various citizens say about the change in sorrow. It is even said that he is good for a touch now and then. Uh, provided the touch is not of too generous proportions. Well, one night several of us are sitting in the hot box, listening to the music and watching the guys and dolls, when something happens as follows. How come you don't bring Marky along, Sorrowful? The housekeeper says it's bad to keep her out until 2 a.m. every night. Oh, I do not believe that. Look at me. Look at regret. Nevertheless, she's in bed where she belongs. 
Besides, it's snowing outside. It's cold. Yeah. Uh, she sure is a cute little doll. Mm -hmm. You are a lucky man, sorrowful, to have such a ready-made family. Yeah, I... What's the matter? I gotta get out of here. What's eating you, Sorrow? Look, coming in the door. That is Milkier Willie. He looks mad. He is mad. Today we have a slight argument over a parlay bet. He claims he wins. Milkier Willie is no citizen with whom to have an argument. Look, I'm leaving by the back way. You don't know where I am, see? Okay, Sorrow. I cannot see him till he cools off somewhat. I'll, I'll go and... Go ahead. Yeah, it's too late. There are some of Milkier's boys at the back. Uh-oh. He sees you. Sit tight. Hello, Sorrowful. Hello, Milkier. Broadway, how are you? Never waste in my life. It's too bad. Regret how the horses. Oh, the ones I pick have three legs only. Funny thing is, I pick a good parlay bet today. Don't I, Sorrowful? You do not have a parlay bet today. There is some doubt between us. I think we will clear that up. I will sit down. What do you want? You, Sorrowful. Now look, Milky. Get up and start moving to the door, just like nothing is happening. Milky, you kid! Broadway, I like you, so I will thank you to stay out of this little argument. All right, Sorrowful, on your feet. We are going for a ride. It is snowing outside. It is not a good night for a ride. Sorrowful will not worry about the weather. All right, I sit on your feet and move out ahead of me now. All right, Milky. But there are witnesses. They will not talk, will you, boys? It's like I say. They will not talk. Get moving, Sorrowful. That's it. Stay right in front of me and smile. So they move away from us. And I figure that this is the last time we will see Sorrowful. But then something happens which alters things slightly more than somewhat. And I will tell you about that in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Little Miss Marker. Well, like I am saying, Milkier and Sorrowful move away from us, and we think this is the end. But they are not more than three steps away when something happens as follows. Marky, Marky, beat it. Get out of here. No. You left me alone, Sorrowful. Look, honey, you shouldn't come out. You got only your nightgown on. I miss you, Sorrowful. Sorrowful, get this Look, kid Marky, away. Marky, I don't know how you got out, but you go back. Marky, you want to stay with Sorrow. I got a good notion to let you have it, kid or no kid. Take it easy, Milky. If anything happens to this kid, so help me, I'll break you in two. This ain't your kid. Yeah, it's my kid. Marky loves Sorrowful. Marky Starfield's doll. That's right, honey. You're my doll. You dirty double-crossing Welsh are letting a kid pull you out of this. Leave this doll out of our argument, Milkier. I love you, Starful. I love you too, honey. Come on. Up you come. Ah, that's the doll. Starful's going to take you home. Marky, dance first. Not tonight, Marky. You got to go home. You got to get out of this wet nightgown. There'll be another time, Starful. Sure. Sure they will, Milky. But you better not try to stop me now, do you understand? You better not try to stop me now. And what happens is that Sorrowful tains his back on Milky, and without even looking back once, he carries Marky out of the club, her blonde head snuggled on his shoulder. But that is not the end. It seems that Marky catches a bad cold because of the wet nightgown, and Sorrowful will have it no other way but that she goes to the best hospital in town. And all the citizens who know Marky are right there, too. We are waiting outside Marky's room when Sorrowful comes out. Huh. How is she, Sorrowful? Not good, Harry. She... Well, she looks like she's got pneumonia. Oh. Uh, what's... What's the doc say? Nothing, Broadway. Move over. I want to sit down. Shut up. Anything we can do, Sorrowful? Nothing, Harry, thanks. I see you boys to stay here with me. Oh, it is nothing, Sorrowful. We... We, we want to stay with Marky, too. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's funny. A few weeks ago, I'm... I'm... Just a bookie. Today, I... I... 
Listen, that kid's got to get better. Sure, sorrowful. Sure. That's right, she will. Look, uh, look at the papers. Uh, somebody thought a big shot was here because all the boys were coming to the hospital. <laughs> but we told them about Marky. Look, look, look at the story. Uh. We're all here. Yeah, that is right. We're all here. Milky. I have a tough time catching up with you, sorrowful. You're not in any of the joints, but I read the papers and... Uh, Look, Milk Gear, uh, you don't know what's happening. But I know what's going to happen. Come on, Sorrowful, we got a date. Get out of here. Get out. Sure. And you go with me. Mr. Jones, uh, Mr. Jones. Doc, what's the matter, Doc? I think you'd better come in. She wants you. Sure, sure, right away. No, you don't. Not this time. You heard the Doc. I got to go in there. Not without me. I'm going in that room, Milk Gear. All right, but you're coming right back out. And just to see that nothing happens, everybody's going in. Come on, Broadway, Harry, move. Oh, well, not all of you, just Mr. Jones. Everybody goes in, Sawbones. Move out of the way. But shut up. Sorrowful. Sorrowful. Here I am, Marky. How do you feel, baby? I'm awful tired. And I want to dance. In a little while. Sure. Hey, it's... Uh... Is this the same kid that comes in the club that night? Yeah, yeah, th- th- the same kid. Hey, hey, she looks pretty sick. Marky. Marky, you're going you're to get... You're going to get better, huh? For sorrowful? Marky loved sorrowful. <laughs> Marky. <laughs> is... Is he crying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Sorrowful. Marky, want to go home? Sure, baby. Sure. Hey, Doc, what's the matter? You can't do anything for this kid. We have, but she needs the best specialist. Spe- specialist? Who? Oh, get him, will you? I don't care what it costs, but get him. I'm sorry, but Dr. Beerfeld is retired now. He handles only special cases. This is special. Get him. Oh, you don't understand, Mr. Jones. He's very high-priced, and unless you are very well-known, he won't touch the case because he's retired. Is this Beerfeld in the city? Yes. Sorrowful? Yeah, what, Milky? You're uh, really nuts about this kid, huh? I guess I am. Wait here. I'm going to get this beer filled. With that, Milky leaves the room. It's not more than a couple of hours later that we're all sitting in the hall outside Marky's room when Milky comes back. He's got some of his boys with him. And walking fast in front of them is a short, fat little guy in pajamas. His hair is almost, and his eyes are popping from his head. You all arrest him. Boys, this is Dr. Beerfeld. He is here. You, you, you thugs, you, you gunmen. Doc, you did come. These lawless idiots came and got me. He does not want to come at first, but we use persuasion. I tell you, I will have you all arrested, convicted, sentenced. Look, Doc, Doc, you gotta help. You're the only one who can. I will help none of you, you, you gorillas. Kill yourselves off, but I will not say one like you. I will Doc, not. It's, it's my kid. My, my, Marky, she's, she's got pneumonia. I tell you, I will not submit to this outrage for one of your... Uh, did you say a child? Yeah, mine, Doc, my kid. My doll, Marky. A child? Well, why don't you say so in the first place? Where is she? Right there, Doc, in that room right uh, there. Good. We wait out here. And somebody, please get me some pants. <laughs> Doc. Doc, I thought you were never coming out. How is she? Uh, she's a very sick baby. Uh, four in the morning. It was a long night. Uh, the fever's broken. Yeah. She, she, she'll be all right, huh? Uh, your daughter will be all right. Oh, Broadway. Huh? Harry, Mitzi, Milk here, wake up. Wake up, Marky's going to be okay. The doc hey, says so. Say it. It's all okay. Oh, I'm awful glad, sorrowful. <laughs> doc, you are a very lucky guy. I am? Why? Three guesses. Well, I guess that is that. I guess I got to thank you, too, Milky. I, uh... uh, Milky, you... I'll go with you now. Huh? Maybe I could be wrong about that parley, Sorrowful. It could be I am wrong. I think you're right about it. Stop in my place later and I'll get it off my books. <laughs> my, little, my little girl. Where, where is she, little girl? Your little girl. Yes, yes, I read it in the paper. She, oh, Mr. Jones. You, huh? You come back, huh? Where is she? Is she all right? I do not understand. Are you talking about the same child? Yeah, the same doll. She's in that room. Is it? 
It's all right if I go in? It is not. Let him go, Milky. He's a father. I'll be right back. Well, uh, I've done all I can. I, I will go now. Yeah, oh, send me your bill, Doc, will you? I, Sorrowful Jones is the name. Anybody will tell you where I am. All right. Goodbye. Sorrowful? You're going to give up Marky? Got any ideas? But look, Sorrowful. He's a father. Maybe I kind of know how he feels. Especially after tonight. But Sorrowful, he gave her to you. Gave her to you for a marker. He's a father. A real father. And I'm thinking that maybe I'm not so good for the doll. That character is? Shut up. She's, uh, she's sleeping. I didn't want to wake her up. Uh-huh. Broadway. Yeah? Come on in with me, huh? You going to answer her, Sorrow? No. She... She's just talking. In her sleep. Well, there is nothing Sorrow can do about it. Marky does belong to her father, whom we find out is a kind of a black sheep. But he is due for a lot of money when his grandfather leaves it to him. Sorrowful does not even bother to ask him what becomes of him that day he leaves the doll as a marker. Well, it is a funny thing, but it happens that Sorrowful changes again. He puts back on the old blue side suit, he gives up the classy joint on 59, and he loses his smile. But it is not until some days later that the payoff comes, which I will tell you in a minute. Like I am saying, the payoff comes some days later. It is one night when I am sitting in Mindy's with Sorrowful, talking about it. It's better this way, Broadway. The doll has nothing with me. She almost died because she comes out that night looking for me. Yeah, maybe you are right. Look. Hmm? That's Marky's father coming in. Yeah, that's him. Looks like he's looking for somebody. Yeah, he's coming over. Are you going to let him have a snoop full of fingers, Sorrowful? Quiet. Gee, I've been looking all over for you, Mr. Jones. They, uh, they told me I'd find you here. They tell you the truth. You, uh, mind if I sit down? Go ahead. Thanks. Well, look, Mr. Jones, I, uh, I don't know how to begin, but, uh... Well, uh, well, just any time you want to come and see Marky, you'll be welcome. Thanks. But I'm never that far uptown in the classy neighborhoods. Oh. Uh, well, I, uh... I know you went to a great deal of trouble for Marky, clothes, everything, and that hospital bill. Now, my grandfather's very wealthy, and he's willing to pay you. And we do owe you something, don't we? Yeah, I guess you do. I guess you do. Fine, fine. All you have to do is name it. My grandfather will pay it. Sure. I'll trouble you to send it to me so I can get you off my books. Of course. Uh, how much does it come to? I got it marked down right here in my little book. You owe me two dollars for the bet you blew that day. And so ends the story of Little Miss Marker, another of the famous stories. Our opening music was Broadway Rhythm from the movie Bloodhounds of Broadway, based on the story by Damon Runyon. In 1948, the Damon Runyon Theater, with John Brown as Broadway, was directed by Richard Sandville, and the stories were adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. It was produced by Mayfair Syndication. John Henderson speaking. (laughs) ¶¶ 